So by now you've heard the media sensation about erythritol, but in today's session, we're gonna talk a little bit more about how elevated serum erythritol actually predicts central obesity, type two diabetes, and the metabolic milieu that is linked with cardiovascular disease. Now we did a full deep dive all about the erythritol study that was published late last week, but I just want to really solidify this association between elevated serum levels of erythritol and its association with underlying metabolic disease, not from dietary consumption of erythritol. Now, erythritol happens to be the only non-nutritive calorie-free sweetener that is also made biologically in humans via the pentose phosphate pathway from both glucose and fructose. We don't make stevia in our bodies. We don't make monk fruit. We don't make sucralose or aspartame or ACE-K, but we biologically do make small amounts of erythritol, which tend to increase as people gain visceral fat and become more metabolically unhealthy. So it's not really surprising that the study of 3,000 people that was published in Nature Medicine found an association with increased serum levels of erythritol and a higher co-occurrence of major cardiovascular events over a three-year period compared to individuals with low serum levels of erythritol. That is not surprising. But what is surprising is the sensational media coverage. They, they are really good at inducing fear while simultaneously and conveniently omitting important biologic details. That is the legacy media. They did this all throughout COVID. Said, oh, young, healthy people are dying in the hospital. And oftentimes these people were morbidly obese or very obese or had diabetes or high blood pressure. And that story was never conveyed. And I think this erythritol story really exemplifies and epitomizes the downfall of our legacy media outlets and why people do not trust legacy media. So I want to share with you this study. And this was one that I didn't actually share on that full length video. Again, it's important to recognize the title of this erythritol is a pentose phosphate pathway metabolite and associated with adiposity gain in young adults. Meaning what they found in this study is as serum erythritol levels increased over a period of time, there was a strong co-occurrence with central adiposity, that is belly fat. And so when the study makes an association between high blood levels of erythritol and major cardiovascular events, and the, the, the investigators in that study talk about in the details in the actual study, if you read it, saying we couldn't disentangle whether this elevated serum erythritol was from dietary sources or from endogenously produced erythritol made from glucose and fructose, probably from people consuming hyperpalatable processed junk food, sugars, sodas, candy, crackers, things like that. So another article found that elevated serum erythritol predicts future central adiposity gain, that is belly fat, and type 2 diabetes in young healthy adults, meaning that as erythritol increases over time, there is a co-occurrence linked with the formation of belly fat and diabetes. So the scientists say, Erythritol is a newly recognized human metabolic byproduct of glucose synthesized through the pentose phosphate pathway. This pathway, by the way, is upregulated in diabetes. So this is why I get frustrated when I see these sensational news stories saying low carb sweetener popular in keto diets is linked with heart disease. When we have a dossier of literature showing that erythritol increases from endogenous production when people are metabolically unhealthy. So that's why I'm, I'm making video part two of this. You already saw the video part one. I think there's been 50,000 views in the last week. So thank you for watching that. But I just really wanted to hammer two points home. And that is when we see sensational headlines, we need to dig a little bit deeper. The writers, obviously, for the legacy media outlets, they really should be doing their due diligence and look at some of the dossier of literature to double check their associations, for example, with an elevated biomarker that could come from diet, or an endogenously upregulated pathway like this pathway, the pentose phosphate pathway. And I think it's just disingenuous to make these sweeping associations and say, you should never consume erythritol. Now, all that being said, I don't buy erythritol. I don't endorse erythritol. I have a nutrition product company. We don't use erythritol. I don't really care, but this is just inaccurate, sensational science. And I really wanted you to understand um, this association because I think what this fear has caused unnecessarily is concern about all non-nutritive sweeteners like stevia, like monk fruit, like other compounds. And people are thinking that if they have a little bit of stevia or they have a little monk fruit in their coffee, they're going to get a heart attack. Well, lest I remind you, there's actually favorable research in both erythritol science, that is studies showing when people consume erythritol, they have lower post-meal glucose levels. There's actually favorable impacts linking erythritol consumption. And I know some people have 
digestive issues after taking erythritol. That's why I don't use it. I didn't generally get a little upset stomach and I know a lot of people do. Uh, but there's also evidence to show that when people consume stevia, which has been consumed for thousands of years, along with monk fruit, there actually is favorable post-meal changes in glucose. And so, you know, when a study like this makes is becomes a national news story and people start freaking out, then it, that causes some mental confusion. And people are like, what, do you have stevia? Is that going to, you know, ca- give me a heart attack? It's like, no, the evidence suggesting that stevia uh, is benign is is widely recognized uh, as is monk fruit and, and other compounds. So again, just wanted you to recognize that sometimes the legacy media outlets, they do a good job of creating fear, but they don't do a good job of doing their due diligence and talking about the historical background and the nuances in the biology. So I just wanted to share with you this association between elevated serum levels of erythritol and its links and predictive prognostic value in terms of indicating future weight gain around the abdomen and type 2 diabetes. So hopefully you found this helpful. I'll link the other video in the description below. I appreciate your likes, your shares, and your comments. Thank you for being here, and we'll catch you on a future show down the road. Bye now.